Yeah. Uh, we've been talking mainly about reconstructing buildings and infrastructure, but one of the findings of a lot of recovery operations is that in the end one has also to invest a lot in, in livelihoods of people, in job creation, in employment, because, I mean, it, it is important for people to have a safe uh, roof above their heads, but, I mean, thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of people will, as a result of the earthquake, have lost their job or part of their income and the country will take a long time to recover even to the very low poverty levels that it was before the actual earthquake. So I, I think I call to the international community and all NGOs engaged to not just think about reconstructing things, but also look at what livelihoods people have, what kind of employment they look for, and, and invest in this kind of activities, maybe through credit schemes or through cash uh, systems, cash for but mm -hmm. cash for work but uh, do not overlook the whole kind of socio-economic dimension of the disaster as well. Matthew, you wish to say something? Yes. Um, it's very important that um, we, we think about the social impact of this, mm -hmm. of this earthquake. Mm -hmm. There's many people who were the, the head of the family and who were working. Now they are handicapped. Mm -hmm. So, and many other, other ones who, uh, I mean, my, the country is 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 facing a, a reality by handicapped people how to improve in the society. So it's 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 something that's being being acting slowly, slowly. So now we have a great a great factor to improve to to let those people acting rapidly. Um, the other impact is the the children, and also the ones who were already in the caves. So they are, they have many things to do. They have many things to do, and when we consider also, like uh, Mr. Bruno said, about the hurricane seasons which is coming right now. So we have to also to prepare for this. All the people has uh, this, uh, it's a significant situation that I've learned or seen when we were all um, in the street we pray that no we pray that there has no rain mm -hmm. because it's gonna it's gonna be something something terrible because all people are the, in the street so I want I want that the international community consider Haiti not like a beneficiary but also like a partner that we can we can act with and building capacity and increase normal society society action like um, health system um, engineering system and and another another factor so that our country will be very uh, I, I mean our country will be able to work on the world of development of sustainable, no, sustainable development is very important for us and our organization also. We are a reference in Haiti and we try always to, to do our best, but it's not easy to, to, to make the voice happen in, in, the higher, in, the higher, in the higher level. So that's why I thank also the UNSDR and uh, the global network that we have this this space to call for a sustainable development mm -hmm. and and actions so we want something good right now if you give us something give us uh, give give us a good thing so that we'll be able to appreciate it and also to comfort it like uh, we when when you offered me a, a table you can a firm a table so I can look at this is an art. So I, I look at it every day so I can inspire it, so I can be joined. It. It's, a, it's something that inspires inside of us something good and also something better. Mm -hmm. So we want a better Haiti. It's, it's time for this. Mm -hmm. And we think that uh, we have to be honest um, with Haiti, honest for its economic development honest for the health development, honest for society development. Mm -hmm. We need this 
and it's not for now, it's for the future, for the children mm -hmm. who's come after us. Marcus, last word to you. It's, it, it's the political will. It's, it's, you know, we know, we know what needs to be done in many ways. Uh, it is getting that commitment actually transferred from policy down into practice and, and that will not happen unless the whole governance issue, the whole accountability issue, you know, it's, it's, it's not just the infrastructure, it's the institutions, it's the governance processes, it's people being part of that reconstruction is the only way that we're going to build back a safer, more resilient Haiti. So in summary, the Global Network for Disaster Reduction is calling for global change in the way that aid is given to make governments more accountable. They're calling for governments who give aid to spend more on disaster risk prevention. And this, they believe, will actually save those governments a lot of money in the long run. They want public buildings in Haiti to be reconstructed safer and stronger to withstand future shocks, including the ever-present risk of hurricanes as that season is nearly upon them. And they want the international community to find a way to empower local communities to share in the rebuilding of their shattered towns, a way that will also allow local people to hold governments to account for the standards of construction. Thank you to our panel. And thank you for joining us.